Hey everyone, Pastor Rod here in Tokyo, Japan, and we're doing a series on spiritual warfare. This is a really important subject for all of us. Last time we did talked about in, internal spiritual warfare or temptation from the devil, like Jesus experienced in Matthew 4, and how Jesus won totally and how he's teaching us how to, how to win. But this week I want to talk about external attacks. And in, in the Lord's Prayer, Jesus teaches us to pray every day. He says, this is how you should then pray, Matthew 6, 12. Uh, Lord, you know, protect me from um, temptation and from the evil one. It, the, the actual Greek is from evil, from, from evil things, evil one, evil stuff that happens around us, to us. And in the New Testament, in the, in the Gospels, we actually read that how evil attacked Jesus on many different occasions in different ways. And I'm just going to mention a few of them from just a couple of chapters in, in, in Mark chapter um Mark chapter 1, right at the beginning of the gospel, he um, is baptized in water. He comes out filled with the Spirit. Um, and straight away, he goes back to his uh, uh, home area uh, in Galilee, Capernaum. He goes to a, a synagogue, a place of worship for the Jewish people. And a man is in there and starts screaming out with the power of the devil, uh, I know who you are. And Jesus says, be quiet. And straight away, the presence of God evoked a response from a another person. And this person, I don't think, was wanting to hurt Jesus. But there are times sometimes where um, that does happen. We'll, we'll talk about that a bit later. But just to let you understand that this is not an unusual thing. In fact, Jesus said, expect opposition. He said, if they hated me, they'll hate you too. And this man, I, I don't think, hated Jesus. But there, there is that concept that there are some things that will come against us. Um, I've had lots of things in my life. I've been a believer for 44 years. And three days after I um, became a believer, I was a fireman. I was 19. I was totally changed by the power of God. And three days later, three days after my conversion to Jesus, a fireman hit me in the head and said, don't you ever talk about Jesus again and uh in the fire station and um it was it was confronting it was shocking it was horrible and i went home and i opened the bible and god spoke to me from isaiah chapter 7 and um it says if you do not stand firm in your faith you will not stand at all and i thought it was a word for me and i retained it i've held it to this day it's helped me in other moments of crisis um in one country i was put in in prison for one day it wasn't very long was it but um, I was told, I was screamed at and said, you'll stay in here forever because they said, you are a spy in our country. I said, no, I'm a preacher. I'm, a, I'm a, just here to talk about Jesus. And anyway, long story short, I was allowed to leave and get off that place, out of that place uh, in the afternoon. They put me on a flight. I got out. I said, thank you, Lord. I've been um, lots of stuff for the, for the, you know, stuff happens. I also know that protection happens, and in, even when I was hit in the head, I wasn't, um, you know, incapacitated. I wasn't knocked out. Um, it was just terrible. But uh, God was there and got me through that. But in Mark chapter 3, just early in, in, in Mark, there's other opposition that Jesus faces, and one of them is about the Sabbath day. And um, with the, the, the Jewish leaders called the Pharisees, um, they not only had a Sabbath day, which is a one day of rest, but they had rules of what you could and couldn't do. And, and Jesus made it very clear in his teaching that you're not made for the Sabbath, the Sabbath is made for you. That's what Jesus said. So there doesn't need to be new rules about the Sabbath. The Sabbath is there to serve us and bring us replenishment and peace and, and blessing. But it was about the Sabbath that Jesus got a lot of opposition from these religious leaders. In fact, this is one of the reasons finally Jesus was crucified, was Jesus teaching on Sabbath and also Jesus teaching on the temple, that he, the temple would be destroyed and, and he, he would create the, the new temple in three days. Well, that's the three days Jesus was between crucifixion and resurrection. He, he was raised the new temple. He is the new temple, and we worship him in spirit and in truth. We don't need a temple because we have Jesus as our temple, and he lives in us, and we have become the temples. That's a different teaching. But this, this area of teaching on the Sabbath, 
brought tremendous opposition, not from people outside the Jewish faith, but from people that had so many rules, so many rules. Now, in the Old Testament, there are a lot of rules, but these people had rules on rules. In fact, someone counted, that, or many, many people counted, that there were 613 rules in the Old Testament, sorry, just in the first five books of Moses, the, the Pentateuch, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, 613 rules. A lot of them are food rules. A lot of them are, are rules around um, festivals. And a lot of them are moral rules. Um, and, of course, the, Jesus said, I have come not to put away the law but to fulfill the law, to be the completion of the law. And so Jesus is able to say, well, no, no, you weren't made to obey all the laws of the Sabbath. The Sabbath was made for you to replenish and replenish your strength and heart and soul and and get ready to love your family again and be ready for work, etc. But Jesus received tremendous opposition for that teaching on freedom with Sabbath, freedom with the Sabbath. That it's really interesting the the opposition he got from that one thing. Not only that, but then he got opposition from um, that, that they started saying this Jesus is doing great miracles is doing it by the power of Beelzebub or the Lord of the Lord of the Flies or another word for Satan or the devil or evil. He's they, they, and so Jesus was loving people, but they were criticizing him. Wow. That's an external attack that we've all had or we're all going to get sometime. And I don't like being criticized. I've never become, you know, like, oh, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm ready now for all criticism. You know, it's hard, especially from people who love you, which I'll talk about in a moment. But um, to, Jesus was attacked in this way by these people with false accusations. Something's not true. It wasn't like that, and, and, and he was attacked for that. And the final one I want to mention is from his mother and brothers. In, in Mark 3, the last opposition we read here, is a lot of opposition, it's from his mothers and brothers, and it says um, that they came um, because they thought that he was out of his mind, or they came to get him. And um, Jesus says, no, my mother and my brothers are those who obey me, who um, it says here in, in Mark 3, um, 34, he looked at those seated in a circle around him and said, here are my mother and my brothers. Whoever does God's will is my brother and sister and mother. But the opposition came from his beautiful mum, Mary, and his brothers and sisters. Who were they? Well, they were obviously other children that, that Joseph and Mary had after the birth of Jesus. They, they, they were a normal family. Um, with normal sexual relations after they got married, after Jesus was born, and he had other brothers and sisters, and there's actually they actually name them in some other in another gospel. But here the opposition came from those closest, and that's really a hard one. And you know, when I became a believer at 19, um, I got opposition from my surfer friends because I stopped taking you know dope with them and stopped doing stuff, and got opposition from my dad who um, at that time I was not close to, but he really opposed my new faith. Um, the good news is my dad, uh, uh, when I was 40 years old, my dad actually said to me, your faith is good and your family is good and your God has blessed you. And I said, Dad, my, dog, my God can be your God. His name is Jesus. And he went, no, no, no. My dad actually became a believer at the age of 90, three days before his death. Amazing story for another time. But, you know, he opposed me. And sometimes we just have to outlive those who oppose us because of our faith in Christ. So what I'm saying here is that there is an external, um, I'm not saying my dad was evil, by the way, but there is an external power that wants to hurt us. Number one, I believe we do have protection. Psalm 91 says God has put angels all around us. God will protect us in the day and the night, and he will protect us. And Although things happen, I'm thinking, I, I think, well, what would happen if God did, didn't protect us? And I think I believe God has protected you absolutely, completely, totally at certain times. We need to believe that. But sometimes things happen and we have to just lean on the Lord. I don't know why things happen. You know, I, I don't know why, you know, 
sickness happens and we're not healed or, um, you know, we do get criticized and no one comes to our defense or, um, I don't know. But I do know that God makes us strong and makes us firm. And, the, you know, um, and I, you know, 1 Peter 5, 10, I think it says that after you've suffered a little while, God will himself make you strong, firm, and steadfast. And that's one of the early scriptures I learned, you know, when I got hit in the head and I got criticized. And I love that scripture. It says, after you've suffered a little while, Rod, I'm putting myself into that scripture, God speaking to me, saying, after you've suffered this a little while, it's going to go on for a little while, but then God's going to make you strong, firm, and steadfast and make a stronger, better, better mental health, better ready to be to be living great lives, better to overcome rejection, stronger for relationships. And so um, Jesus went through this. We, we can't say, God, remove it all, because Jesus himself went through much more than we'll ever go through. Of course, he was crucified and and flogged and crucified, so uh, we won't go through that. And so um, we need to understand, though, that Jesus says in the in the, the the Lord's prayer, one of the prayers every day. He said, "This is how you should pray the Lord's prayer." And you know, our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Let us forgive others as we forgive, uh, be, being forgiven or had our debts forgiven by you. And, and then deliver us from evil or protect us, save us from, from, from um, uh, being tempted and from the evil one. Save, help us from internal um, attack of the enemy and then external attack of the enemy. Psalm 91 is amazing if you want to read it. It really does speak about protection against all these things. So we live in a, a world that's imperfect. Only heaven is perfect. And... I've been to some countries where I've seen persecution at much higher levels than many of you have ever seen. I've seen people, um, you know, beaten up for the sake of Christ or tossed out of homes or um, a lot of things. And um, if we don't have that, we should be thankful, but we should also pray for our persecuted brothers and sisters around the world as believers and uh, and pray for protection and and be strong and get strong through trials and um, so this is spiritual warfare. And some people say to me, Rod, living in Japan, there's almost or very, very few Christians in Japan. Is it a dark place? Are you in a hard place? And my answer is, well, yes and no. I guess every place is different and there are some challenges, but not really because I feel this same level in many countries that I've been to. I've been criticized many times in Australia. Um, opposition, I've been hit in the head, as I've said. Uh, some of my friends say goodbye. You know, life is uneven, life is unfair, but God is good and God will strengthen us and protect us in our environment and what we will face. So let me pray that in your lives, you will find the protection and the strength of the Lord. Here we go. Lord, I want to pray for everyone here for whatever they're they're going through or will go through. Lord, I pray strength. I pray for protection, angelic protection, Holy Spirit protection, God, your protection upon us. Help us to be strong in those times and times we don't understand what's happening. Help us to be strengthened. And just like your word says there, after we've suffered a little while, you yourself will make us strong, firm, and steadfast to stand in the tough time to come out the other end. And I pray, Lord, for all our brothers around the world, the brothers and sisters, that we continually pray for protection and help in their persecution and opposition. Jesus be with them, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you all. Thank you so much for joining us today. And if you enjoyed today's episode with Pastor Rod, why don't you subscribe on whatever platform you are listening to this and we'll see you next time.